Hi there, welcome to the Visual ModFlow Flex video training series. My name is Braden McNeil and I'm the lead software trainer here at Waterloo Hydrogeologic. In this video I'll discuss the process for viewing model results. After translating and running your groundwater model, the interface should look like this, with a green check mark indicating that each of the selected flow, transport, and secondary engines have run successfully. When you proceed to the next workflow step, you'll have the option of viewing results in two main formats, as charts and as maps. In this video, I'll review the process for viewing your model results using the mapping functionality in Visual ModFlow Flex. Viewing model results as charts was discussed in the previous video. Clicking the View Maps button will open a window with the Flex Viewer, which allows you to review your model results in 3D, layer, row, and or column views all at once. Specific rows, columns, or layers can be selected using the fields at the top left of the Flex Viewer. Model outputs are all listed under the Model Explorer under the Outputs section. By default, the head results of your groundwater flow model will be displayed initially. If you've run a contaminant transport model, the results will also be displayed under the Model Explorer under the Transport section. It's also possible to display the results of a mod path simulation by, uh, by activating the forward and or backwards path lines under the Model Explorer. When viewing results, it's possible to render 3D gridded data such as head or concentration results as surfaces, which are shown here, and also on a cell-by-cell -cell basis, as shown here. Simply use select the rendering option using the buttons in the toolbar. The toolbar also includes buttons to turn on or off grid lines, to zoom, and pan. The toolbar also includes a cell inspector tool, which is, allows you to review model inputs and outputs on a cell-by-cell -cell basis. Activate the cell inspector by clicking the button in the toolbar. You then decide which model information will be displayed in the cell inspector. Available information includes inputs such as cell position information like the layer, row, or column number, model properties and boundary condition values, and of course model outputs including heads, drawdowns, fluxes, and concentration data. After selecting the data to be displayed in the cell inspector, simply click a cell to display the associated information for that particular cell. The Flex Viewer also includes an information bar at the bottom which will display information on a cell-by-cell -cell basis similar to the cell inspector. Simply scroll over the model to view the available information. You can select which information will be displayed in this information bar by clicking the Preference button within the information bar. If any of your model results are based on a transient model run, which is often the case for contaminant transport simulations, then you should see a few time step buttons at the top of the toolbar. These time step buttons allow you to select which output time will be used to display model results from the transient model run. If the time step buttons do not appear, it's probably because the transient data is not the active layer within the current view. For example, if I activate path line outputs, you'll see that the time step buttons disappear. To fix this, simply turn off and then on again the transient data, and this will make the time step buttons appear once again. In future versions of Visual ModFlow Flex, the time step buttons will be available regardless of which model data is the active layer, and these buttons will simply be inactive when transient data is not available. Please note that the Flex viewers, as shown here, are only able to display one set of 3D gridded data at a time. This means that if you activate uh, head values here, we'll see that the concentration data is automatically deactivated, and vice versa. In order to view multiple sets of 3D grid gridded data, you can open up a new 3D viewer. From the Window menu, select New 3D Window. This will open a, a new window, allowing you to display any model elements together, including model inputs and outputs. As you can see here, the independent 3D viewer allows you to visualize data objects from the data tree, numeric grids, model inputs such as the location of boundary conditions, and of course model outputs. And in fact, multiple sets of 3D gridded data such as heads and concentrations can be displayed simultaneously. 
By default, when activating 3D gridded data objects in a 3D viewer, the data will be displayed as opaque cells, color-coded based on the model results, as shown here. You can customize all data objects by right-clicking on the particular object that you need to update and selecting the Settings option. This will open a settings window for the selected data object. Under the Style node of the Settings tree, you'll see all of the available options for visualizing the selected data. 3D Gridded Data has the most visualization options, although most models' inputs can be customized using many of the same methods. 3D Gridded Data can be displayed as cells, which are shown here, but also as lines, vertices, slices, color maps, isolines, and isosurfaces. To activate or deactivate any particular rendering of the data, simply select the associated visualization st uh, style and activate or deactivate the relevant checkbox. For example, I can turn off the cell view shown here and replace it with a color map for a selected layer row or column. In a similar way, I can choose to display ISO lines of the groundwater heads at a selected layer row or column. As I mentioned before, the independent 3D viewer allows you to display multiple sets of 3D gridded data simultaneously. To demonstrate, I'll turn on the concentration data for my transport model. These will automatically be displayed as cells, but I can then update the rendering of these concentration results to display an isosurface of contaminant concentrations equaling 10 mg per liter. I simply deactivate the cells and activate and add the isosurface at the desired concentration. If you're visualizing transient 3D gridded data, you'll also be able to select which output time is displayed by updating the time section in the object settings. As you can see, the 3D viewer provides you with the most flexibility with respect to visualizing your model outputs. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more Visual ModFlow Flex training videos. For additional training resources, including user manuals and free tutorials, please visit the Visual ModFlow Flex support page on our website. A link is provided in the video description.